Hey, what's up everyone? My name's Walter, and I'm back here with some more stories from Reddit. We actually end up talking about dates quite a bit, but that's going to be what this video is all about. Now, I'm far from being an expert on the subject, so we're going to be reading stories that anyone with common sense would see the problems with. This is the kind of thing where they show up drunk, or won't stop touching you, or it turns out to be George Zimmerman catfishing you and he yells can't flim flam the zim zam and shoots one of the waiters. That'd be a pretty bad date. Anyway, let's begin with cringy dates from Reddit Dating Hell. Dating Hell is that place where you too can leave stories about your horrible date. One date, years of harassment. So this was a bit before Tinder was big, so I can't even blame Tinder. This was Plenty of Fish about three years ago. You may wonder, why would this girl even remember a date from three years ago? Well, for one, it was quite memorable on its own, but also this guy reminded me a few weeks ago. So I was 28 or so, and I matched with this nice smiley guy we will name N. He was 26, 5 foot 10, and a registered nurse from what I recall. We chatted for a few days, and finally we went out on a dinner date. He was a few minutes late, but he drove 30 minutes to my city, so it was alright. Once I see him, I find the first lie. He is 5 foot 5 or so, definitely shorter than me, and definitely nowhere near stated height on the app. I move past it, but I'm already starting to get a bad vibe. We go into this bar slash restaurant, I get a burger, and I'm trying to make conversation, but he just intensely stares at me. This was to the point I had to ask at least twice if there was something wrong. He replied twice, saying I was just so beautiful he couldn't believe it. The first time I thought he was just trying to compliment me, but it kept going on, the staring and excessive comments. He asked me for a second date two minutes into dinner, to which I said it's too early to tell. I can't possibly fathom why you'd ask for a second date at the beginning of the first one. I'm assuming desperation, so not the greatest trait to have. Also, not sure how much you'd have to stare at someone for them to think something was wrong. I know I used this picture of Lucas already, but it's the image that comes to mind, and it's really creepy. We continue to talk, and I find out he is actually 34. Why he lied about being 8 years younger? Who knows. I'm starting to get upset, and I asked if anything on his profile was real. He said he is a nurse, but then confessed he lives with his mom. Yep, as a 34-year-old man. He bought an expensive car so he couldn't afford to pay rent, lol. So at this point, I'm way over it. He lied about his age, his height, his living situation, and he's also creeping me out. Finished that damn burger so fast, that I said I had to get home. He insists on walking me to the car. He tries to kiss me. It was awkward. I moved away after a second. He asks about a second date again. I say I'll think about it and leave. I drove 10 minutes to my house, and guess what I find when I get there? I have 5 missed calls, a voicemail, and a handful of text messages. I text back to see if he has an emergency or if I forgot something. He says everything is okay, but he'd like to talk to me. I say I don't have time to talk, but I could answer whatever question he has through text. He keeps calling nonstop despite this. I then open the first voicemail where it sounded like he was crying, asking, Why won't you go on a date with me? Is it because I'm not a doctor? Do you think you're better than me? At that point, I realize I'm dealing with crazy, so I tell him again through message, thanks for dinner, this isn't a good fit, good luck. I turned off my phone. I blocked his number after a couple more days of voicemails that I didn't even bother to listen to. For months, he got different numbers and tried to communicate with me. One week into it, he sent me a picture of something he had bought for me, some girly souvenir thing. He didn't have any other info about me, so at least there was that. Every few months I'll get an Instagram or WhatsApp request from him. I just ignore it. Last month he texted me again from a new line, reminding me how I clearly liked him at that date, that I even kissed him. I told him this was harassment, that I didn't like him and that he needs to respect my decision and to have some dignity. He apologized, said he was just hospitalized for depression, and I said I was sorry but I couldn't help him and that he needs to get therapy and not harass women. Since then, he tried to add me on Instagram again, and I still have him blocked on my phone. I was very turned off from online dating for a while. Since then, I've met some other needy people, but no one like this. I now never go on a dinner date, just coffee or a drink, so easy exit if needed. God, this has to be about the least you can do and still get a stalker. An awkward date, she obviously didn't want to kiss at the end of it, and this guy is just immediately obsessed. Must have been love at first sight, I guess. You can tell it's a bad date when she doesn't even mention whether the burger was good or not. Starting out by lying about everything is, of course, such a bad idea. Like you're going to be so charming they're just going to decide they don't care. Anyway, let's check out another terrible date. 
this happened a few months ago. I think it was worth making a Reddit account to share this story with everyone. So I'm in third year university and I have a job, so it's kind of hard for me to find the time to go on dates. However, recently I downloaded Bumble just to see what kind of activity I would get. After a few weeks on the app, I matched with a girl named Amy and she started messaging me. Unlike other dating apps, on Bumble the girl has to make the first move. She was a good looking girl, we had relatively the same interests, and she even went to the same school as me. We talked for a few weeks and eventually set up a date. We decided she would come over to my place for dinner. My plan was to impress her with my culinary skills. Yes, I took a few culinary classes. The day arrived and I heard a knock at my door. I open it and I breathe a sigh of relief. Amy looked like she did in her pictures. I've always heard stories about how many people don't usually look like they do in their pictures. Amy gives me a hug and she comes in. She arrived a little bit early so I still had all my ingredients out with food still frying on the pan. She didn't seem to mind though as she stood by me as I cooked and we chatted. At this point I'm kind of stunned. Amy is beautiful, we have a ton of things in common, we go to the same school, she's smart, funny, a great conversationalist, and she looked exactly like she did in her pictures. She was almost too good to be true. I finally finish preparing the food and Amy and I sit down and begin to eat and chat. After the meal we start getting a little flirty with each other. One thing leads to another and we end up taking things to the bedroom. We begin to kiss and everything is going normally, until I feel Amy's nails scrape down my back like a wild tiger. I scream and shoot up. What's wrong? Amy asked me. What the hell was that for? I asked. She apologized and told me she gets carried away sometimes. I took a handheld mirror and looked at my back in the bigger mirror and it looked like a tiger attacked me. Blood was dripping down my back. I was shocked at this point but I didn't want to ruin the night because we had been having such a good time up until this point and I still wanted to see where our relationship would go. I went into the bathroom to clean out my cuts in the shower. When I came out of the shower, Amy was sitting on my bed smiling at me and apologized again. I looked at how beautiful she was and honestly, couldn't say mad at her. We ended up getting back into the groove of things and we get to the part where it was time for protection. I pulled some condoms out of the dresser. I don't know about you other guys, but before I use a condom, I always inspect it to make sure it's in good condition. The first condom I pulled out had a small hole in the tip. I thought that was weird but breathed a sigh of relief that I actually checked it before I put it on. I threw that one away and grabbed another one. As I was doing this, Amy was distracting me, almost like she didn't want me checking them. She kept climbing on top of me and trying to get me to hurry up. As I inspected the next condom, I found it also had a small hole in the exact same place the previous one had. At this point I was very suspicious. I tell Amy to stop and I dump out all of my condoms and start checking each one and sure enough, they all had a hole in relatively the same spot. I know for a fact they were all in good condition when I got them so I knew they were tampered with and I knew for a fact it was Amy since I live alone and hadn't had anyone in my bedroom before her. At first when I confront her about it she denies everything but I tell her I'm not stupid and to just tell the truth. Eventually, as I continue to question her, she tells me, Okay, fine, I did it, but it's only because every guy I'm with just wants to fuck me, then not call me again. You're a really great guy, and I wanted you to stay with me, even after tonight. This made me furious. I said, Are you fucking kidding me, Amy? Do you know how this could have fucked up my life? How could you automatically assume I wouldn't call you? I was liking you up until this point. At this point, I had a girl in my place who gave me a tiger wound and also tried to make me a father without my consent, so I told her to leave. She got dressed and began to walk to the front door. I followed her to make sure she would leave. She did leave, but not before knocking over a few chairs in my kitchen on the way out. After that day, I was much more careful with the girls I met up with on Bumble. I guess the moral of this story is to never take someone at face value. You can never truly know a person based on a brief encounter. Also, men, take care of your condoms. Christ, that is pretty bad. I've actually never checked a condom before, but I'm not the smartest when it comes to these things. Let's be real, wounding me is nowhere near a deal breaker, but trying to trick me into having a child? That's fucked up. Definitely a deal breaker. Good thing this guy is more careful than I am. By the way, I omitted the title in the interest of not revealing the ending. Okay, we're going to cover one more short story that's also pretty horrifying. For different reasons this time. I had just turned 18 and decided to get a Tinder account. I had recently gotten out of a two-year dating hiatus after getting out of a pretty toxic and rough relationship. I matched with this really attractive girl named Stephanie. I messaged her and we began talking and really hit it off. We ended up exchanging numbers. 
I called her a few times, but every time we spoke on the phone she always sounded distorted and her voice seemed very off. Whenever I asked why this was, she told me her phone was broken and she was sick. After a few weeks of texting back and forth, we decided to set up a date. I asked her if she wanted to go out to an Italian restaurant, but she said no. After listing off a bunch of ideas and her saying no to all of them, I asked her what she wanted to do. She asked me to come to her place on Friday night and we could watch Netflix and order some pizza. I was kind of weirded out by the fact that she invited a random person over to her house that she hadn't even met yet, but I was really into her, so I stupidly agreed. Looking back at it, I know how stupid I was. So the date night finally arrived and I was excited, but also very nervous. I pulled up to Stephanie's house and I immediately got bad vibes. Her house looked really creepy. All the lights were off and the rest of the neighborhood looked dead. At this point, I should have heeded all the warning signs and just gotten in my car and drove home. But, like the stupid teenager I was, I walked up to her front door and knocked. No one answered at first, so I knocked again and the same result, no answer. Oh yeah, and did I mention it was the middle of January in New England? Needless to say, I was freezing my ass off and frustrated. Just as I turned around to go to my car, I heard someone unlock the front door. I turned around and as soon as the door opened, a massive man was standing in the doorway. He was at least six foot five with a white tank top and sweatpants. He stared me down and didn't say a word. At this point I was frozen and didn't even know what to say. I knew I had the correct address. I managed to get a few words out of my mouth. Um, uh, is Stephanie home? The large man said, yeah, I'm her brother. She's downstairs waiting for you. Come on in. He opened the door wider and motioned for me to come inside. I looked behind the crack in the door hinge and to my complete horror there was someone hiding behind it like they were waiting to pounce on me once I walked through the door. At this point I knew I made a massive mistake so I immediately made a mad dash to my car. I ran into my car, locked the door and pulled out of there like a bat out of hell. I was in such a panic I even knocked over a few garbage cans on my way out. When I got home I did some further research into the house and who actually lived there and it turned out the house had been abandoned for over six months and no one lived there. After this revelation I reported it to the police and they told me they would investigate. As of the time of this post the people involved have not been caught or identified. Needless to say, I deleted Tinder that very night, and we'll just meet women the old-fashioned way from now on. That one reads like a let's not meet story. I don't have much to say specifically here, but all three of these stories should let you know that you really have to be careful with this online dating. For a multitude of reasons. So please bear that in mind. Well, that's about all the time I have for you today. Thanks for watching, everyone. Like the video if you liked it, leave a comment if you have something to say about one of the stories, or even feel free to mention your own horrible date in the comments. I appreciate those too. If you're new here and like the video, I'd ask you to subscribe for more of the same. I also appreciate my generous patrons. I'll be shouting them out on Sunday probably since it's my next special, but first, big thanks to new patrons Cho and Cha Parker. You and everyone else are really helping me out with the support and I'm thankful for it. Yeah, so Sunday is my birthday, so there might be a nice guy slash nice girl video, unless I think of something I want to do more. Let me know what you think if you feel strongly about it. Don't worry, there's a lot more content coming in the near future. I've been having fun with it lately. Well, have a great day, everyone, and be careful in your online dating endeavors. You don't want any of these things to happen to you.